materials that I'll be using to crochet this lacy bolero are some number four worsted weight yarn. This is the Loops and Threads Natural Marl. And as I stated, this is a number four worsted weight yarn. Of course, I will also be using a handy dandy measuring tape just to help get my measurements correct for my own body size. I will also be using my resin hook collection and I'm gonna go with a 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. If you guys would like to purchase these, they are available over on my website right now, along with a few other designs. And then of course, we will need some scissors to help cut our yarn. And lastly, a darning needle to help sew together the entire top. So let's go ahead and dive on into the tutorial. To crochet this bolero, what I'm gonna do is crochet a front and a back panel, as well as two sleeve panels and sew them all together at the very end. So let's go ahead and get started on the lacy pattern. As always, I'm gonna start off with a basic slip knot and bring my 6.0 millimeter through. For this little lacy pattern, I do need to start off with a base chain with multiples of 10 plus three. So for my body size and this bolero that I'm about to make, I'm gonna start off with a base chain of 50 plus three. I've just created my base chain of 50 and this is what it's looking like. And at this point I can go ahead and chain my three extra. And two of those are for turning corners. So now to begin row one of this lacy pattern, I will be working with double crochets for the entire pattern. So I'm going to yarn over and skip the first two chains from my hook and insert my hook into the third chain space. And here I'm going to place my first double crochet. Now the pattern for every single row does change ever so slightly, so I will walk you guys through every single row. But here for row one, after that first double crochet, I'm gonna start off with a chain three, two, three, and likewise, I'm going to skip three stitches in a row. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, and into my fourth chain space, I'm going to yarn over and place a double crochet. So wherever I'm chaining three, I will also skip three stitches. And now at this point, I'm gonna work three double crochet in a row. So this is my first double crochet. I'm gonna yarn over, find the next chain space, and place my second double crochet. And one more time, yarn over, look for the next chain space, and place my third double crochet in a row. So this is the beginning for the pattern. Let's go ahead and move on. At this point, I'm gonna chain three again, and likewise, I will skip three. So here's my chain three, count one, two, three, and here into my fourth chain space, I'm gonna yarn over and place one double crochet that will stand alone. So at this point, this is essentially the basis for our lacy pattern. I'm gonna be repeating this over and over until I have four stitches remaining in my row. So at this point, let's go ahead and start over again. I'm gonna chain three and skip three stitches. Yarn over and insert my hook into the fourth chain space available and place my first double crochet and just like before, I do need three double crochet in a row. So place two more right next to each other. And again, I'm gonna chain three and skip three chain spaces. Yarn over and insert my hook into the fourth chain space. And this Double crochet is going to stand alone just like it did before. I'm coming up here to the end of row one and as you can see, I've just finished off with my three double crochet in a row. As I stated, I have one, two, three, and four chain spaces left. So to go ahead and finish out row one, I'm going to chain three and skip three stitches and finish off row one with a double crochet on the very edge. So if you kind of look at this pattern, it is symmetrical from one edge to the other. So let's go ahead and start working on row two. As always, I'm gonna be chaining two at the start of my row and the chain two never counts as a stitch, just helps us build a little bit of height to start working on the next row of double crochet. 
For row two, again, the pattern does change on every single row. So I've already started off with my chain two. I'm going to yarn over and place a double crochet right back into that very first stitch. I always start and end my row with a double crochet, just like so. At this point, I can go ahead and chain two and skip two stitches. And into that third chain space, I'm going to yarn over and place my first double crochet. So for this stitch, I'm actually picking up both two top loops in that chain space and placing my first double crochet. What I want to do is build upon these three double crochet to create a diamond shape. So after this double crochet, I'm gonna be working three more double crochet directly on top. So here is two double crochet in a row, working directly into that double crochet. Here is my third. Here is my fourth double crochet. And because I need to finish out that diamond shape, I'm gonna work one more double crochet into the next chain space. So if we stop for a moment and take a look at our little diamond shape, I had three double crochet on the row prior, and now for this row, I have five double crochet in a row. So now that I have those five double crochet, I'm going to chain five, two, three, four, and five, and likewise, I'm going to skip five chain spaces. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. Yarn over and place a double crochet into the sixth chain space. So for row two, the pattern is pretty much repeating over again from the chain of five and the five double crochet. So since this is my first double crochet, let's go ahead and work four more in a row picking up that next stitch. Here is my second double crochet, my third double crochet in a row, my fourth, and one more for a fifth. So again, let's go ahead and look at this. I have five double crochet, chain five, five double crochet, and I can go ahead and repeat this pattern over and over until I reach the end of my row. I'm coming here to the end of row two, and I've just finished up the five double crochet in a row. So at this point, you should have one, two, and three spaces left to finish out the row, just like we did at the start. I'm only going to chain two and skip two chain spaces and finish out my row with a double crochet into the very last stitch space. So this is what row two should be looking like. Let's go ahead and move on to row three. Now for row three, we're actually going to be replicating the same steps from row one. So just like before, I'm going to yarn over and place a double crochet into the first stitch space. And now at this point, I can go ahead and chain three and skip three stitches. So here's my chain of three and I'm gonna count one, two, three, and here into my fourth stitch, yarn over and place one double crochet. And again, I wanna have three double crochet in a row, so that makes one. Let's go ahead and work the second double crochet, and one more time for the third double crochet. So if you guys can see, that diamond shape started off small, it's getting larger, skinnier and eventually it will come to a point. So after the three double crochet, I can chain three, skip three stitches and work a single double crochet into the fourth chain space. And again, at this point, go ahead and repeat that same pattern of chain three, skip three and work three double crochet in a row. There's one, two, and three. I'm coming up here to the end of row three, and just as before, I have one, two, three, and four stitch spaces left. After my three double crochet in a row, I can chain three again 
and skip three, yarn over and work one double crochet into that very last stitch space. So this is what row three is looking like and now we can go ahead and move on to row four. As always, chain two and turn your work. And to begin working on row four of this pattern, it's gonna stay pretty much the same, but we're gonna change it up just slightly. So here into that very first stitch space, I'm gonna place my first double crochet and finish it out. And now immediately after this first double crochet, I'm gonna go into the next chain space available and place a second double crochet in a row. So we're just adding in this extra stitch just to help us build upon this little diamond shape. So at this point, now that I have two double crochet into the first two stitch spaces, I'm gonna carry on with that pattern of chaining three and skipping three. So here's one, two, and three. And right here into that fourth chain or stitch space, I'm gonna work one double crochet. So this is what the pattern is looking like. Again, after this one double crochet, I'm gonna chain three and skip three stitches. So here's one, two, and three. And right here into that fourth chain space, I'm gonna work three double crochet in a row. So here's one next stitch space for the second double crochet. And one more time, yarn over and pick up the third double crochet in a row. You can really see that diamond shape coming together. And likewise, where we have these little singular double crochet, we're starting to build upon the start of that diamond shape. So let's go ahead and repeat this pattern for the entire row. Again, I'm gonna chain three and skip three. So here's one, two, three. And into that fourth stitch space, place one double crochet. So we've just finished off the very tip or edge of that diamond shape. And again, I can chain three and skip one, two, three. And into that fourth chain space, I can work three double crochet in a row. So here's one. Here is the second double crochet. And if you notice, I'm picking up the very tip of that diamond shape. And one more time for a third double crochet in a row. As you can tell, this pattern is extremely repetitive, but we do get a super gorgeous end result. So I'm gonna carry on with this pattern of chain three, skip three and work three double crochet, and then chain three, skip three and work one double crochet for the entire row. So right here after my last single double crochet in a row, I'm going to chain three, and skip one, two, three, and work a double crochet into my fourth chain space. And to go ahead and finish out the row just how we started, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more double crochet right into that very last stitch space. So I'm gonna pick it up and work that double crochet. So this is the end of row four. Let's go ahead and start working on row five chain your two and turn your work over, just like always. And now for row five, again, it's gonna change up just a little bit. So let's go ahead and walk you guys through the pattern for row five. Again, I'm gonna yarn over, find that very first stitch space and place one double crochet. And now for row five, I actually wanna have a total of three double crochet in a row. So into the next two stitches or two stitch spaces, I will work two more double crochet. So there is my second double crochet and one more for a third. So not only are we building a diamond pattern throughout the physical top, but as you can start to see, we're also working a little diamond pattern here on the edges. So at this point, now that I have three double crochet in a row, for row five, I'm going to chain five, three, four, and five, and likewise, I'm going to skip five chain spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and count one, two, three, four, five, and here into that sixth chain space, I'm gonna yarn over and place a double crochet. 
So here after this first double crochet, I want to work four more double crochet in a row, just like the other rows. So here is my second double crochet going in for my third. Again, here is my fourth double crochet in a row. And one last time, because I want to expand that diamond shape. One more stitch. Here is my fifth double crochet in a row. And at this point, I can start the pattern all over again. So chain five, three, four, and five. And likewise, skip one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over and insert your hook into the sixth chain or stitch space available. I can wiggle through and work one double crochet. And just like before, I do want to have five double crochet in a row. So I'm going to place four more. Here is my third, fourth, and here is my fifth double crochet. So I'm going to re repeat this pattern of chain five, five double crochet, chain five, five double crochet for the entire row and I'll meet you back at the end of row five. I'm coming up here to the end of row five. I've just finished my five double crochet in a row. And as you can see, we have to go ahead and finish this out. So I'm gonna chain five again, five, and skip five stitches, yarn over and place a double crochet into the sixth chain space, just as we've been doing for this entire row. To go ahead and finish out row five, work two more double crochet in a row. So at the beginning of row five, we started with three double crochet in a row. And as always, we are going to finish with three. So that is the end of row five. We're almost at the point where this pattern is fully repeating. So let's go ahead and work through one or two more rows and I will send you guys off on your way. So for row six, chain two and turn your work. Now the pattern for row six is actually an exact repeat of row four. So we're just gonna be mimicking this. Feel free to look back at your work and follow along to how you created it firstly. But let's go ahead and walk you guys through row six. So after my chain two, yarn over and place a double crochet into that first stitch space. And just like row four, I'm gonna go ahead and work one more double crochet in a row so that we are starting our row with two double crochet. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and chain three and skip three and work one double crochet into my fourth chain space. So pick up that stitch, work a singular double crochet, just as we did before. At this point, I can go ahead and chain three and skip three stitches, one, two, three, and into that fourth stitch space available, go ahead and work one double crochet. And again, I do wanna have a little cluster of three, so I wanna work two more double crochet in a row. So there's two, one more for a third, and I can start that pattern all over again. Chain three and skip three, one, two, three, and into that fourth chain space, place a solo double crochet. Repeat again, chain three, skip one, two, three, and place a double crochet into the fourth stitch space. We need that little cluster of three double crochet together. Two, three, chain three, skip three, and work one double crochet to stand alone. To finish out row six, as you can see, I have my solo double crochet right there. I'm going to chain three and skip one, two, three, place a double crochet into the fourth chain space, or stitch space, excuse me, and go ahead and finish out the row with one more double crochet. Just at the beginning, I had two double crochet, 
and here at the end I will finish with two double crochet. So now at this point we can go ahead and move on to row seven. Now to be completely honest with you guys, you can stop this pattern at any point in the rows because as you can tell, some diamonds finish off where some begin. So it's kind of up to you how many rows you would like to add onto your shruggy, but I'm just gonna go ahead and work a few more rows, get this to the appropriate length and then hop back on camera. But just to go ahead and repeat row one all over again, just to show you how the pattern starts off once more. After my chain of two, I'm gonna yarn over and pick up that very first stitch and work a double crochet. And now at this point, just like row one, I can go ahead and chain three, skip three, and work three double crochet in a row. So here is my first double crochet. Here is my second. And one more time for a third double crochet in a row. Again, I apologize that this is extremely repetitive, but you guys get the gist. Again, I can go ahead and skip three, or chain three, skip three, and work one double crochet into that fourth stitch space. Chain three, skip three, and work three double crochet in a row. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this little section right here and set my work down. But as I mentioned earlier, you can work as many rows as your heart desires. I don't think it'll look too funky if you guys stop in the middle of a diamond or on an odd numbered row. It's completely up to you, however many rows you would like to work this to get your little bolero top at the appropriate length. So I'm gonna take a few hours, work on this just a little bit more, add on a few more rows and hop back on camera. But at this point, once you've decided how many rows you would like to work, feel free to go ahead and work up a second matching body panel and then we can go ahead and move on to the sleeves. I've just finished up my front panel and from where I last left off I only added on a total of three more rows. So just to recap, in total I have worked up 10 rows for the front panel. Again I'm just mimicking rows one through three to finish up those last few rows so you can really see that lacy effect coming through. And now that I have the front panel all completed, I took a few more hours and finished up a matching back panel. So again, I'm just following the same exact steps, creating rows one through 10, and now I have a front and a back panel. At this point, I can go ahead and just set these to the side because it is time to start working on our sleeves. And over the last half hour, I took a little bit of time to start working on my two sleeves. So as I mentioned earlier at the start of this tutorial, the stitch count for this pattern is multiples of 10 plus three. With the front and the back panel, I did 50 plus three because I do need this to be a little bit wider to cover our shoulder sections. But for the sleeves, we do want these to be a little bit tighter. So I decided to go with a row count of 30 plus three. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the other sleeve just to show you guys how I started off. But it's the exact same pattern. We're just working with less multiples of 10. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my yarn, and let me go ahead and show you guys how I start working my sleeves. To reiterate once more, I will be working with multiples of 10 plus three. Feel free to make your sleeves baggier if you would like. I would like mine to be a little bit more tighter and form fitting on the arm. So I'm gonna go with 30 plus three. Here is my chain of 30. And I'm gonna go ahead and add one, two and three more. So just like we did with the front and the back panel, I'm gonna start off with a double crochet, skip the first two chains in the row and add a double crochet into the third chain space. From here, I'm gonna chain three and skip three stitches, one, two, three, and double crochet into the fourth chain from my hook. And now after this one double crochet, I can go ahead and add two more double crochet in a row. So there's two into the next chain space for a third double crochet. And start this all over, chain three, and skip one, two, three, 
one double crochet into the fourth chain space, whoops, and chain three and skip three stitches, one, two, three, double crochet into the fourth chain space and we're coming up again to that cluster of three double crochet in a row. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the next stitch, work one double crochet and pick up the next stitch for my third double crochet in the row and I can go ahead and finish out row one. All right, so at this point, I have officially finished working on the first sleeve, and this is what she's looking like. For all those who are wondering, I chose to do a total of 31 rows. And as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't really matter what row count you stop at. This is just to my own body preferred length. So because I know you guys are going to ask some really quick measurements, the 31 rows with the piece lying flat gets me to exactly 19 and a half inches. So keep that in mind. Again, if you guys have longer arms than I do, you can totally crochet more. Or if you guys would like this like little sweater to be kind of like three quarter sleeve or cropped, you can definitely just crochet less. But this is what the sleeve looks like. Again, this is 31 rows. So at this point, you're gonna wanna go ahead and crochet a second matching sleeve and here she is. So at this point, I finally have all of my little pattern pieces. Just to recap, I have two sleeves, which I will fold in half and sew down the center seam. And likewise, I have a front and a back panel, but of course they are matching in the same respect. So at this point, I can go ahead and start sewing all of the little pieces together. I'm gonna set my sleeves to the side for now and we'll incorporate those in a little bit. And now I can come to my front and my back panel. And what I wanna do is just place them directly on top of each other like so. And depending on how wide or slim fitting you would like your neck to be, what I'm gonna do is attach a new yarn through both of the panels at one corner and stitch up one shoulder section on one side and likewise attach a separate yarn to the other corner and stitch them together along the other. I'm coming back here to my little ball of yarn and I'm just gonna pull out about a foot worth of yarn because we are only stitching together about four or five inches worth. So I'm gonna find a good amount, cut off the spare yarn. And at this point I can go ahead and attach this yarn to the very corner of our bolero. Now that my new yarn is attached and it's ready to be sewn together, I'm just gonna use my little measuring tape just to kind of guesstimate how many inches I would like to close up this top. So I think I'm gonna go for about four inches worth on the right side of my top and I will stop right here. And of course, likewise, on the opposite edge of the top, I will also attach the new yarn, measure out about four inches worth and stop right there as well, just to make sure that we have a wide enough hole for our neck or our head to fit through. Now that I have my two shoulder sections all stitched together, as you can see, there's a nice open gap for my head to fit through. So for the next step, in order to attach the sleeves, I'm just going to keep the little front and back piece open and splayed out flat just like this. And at this point, I can go ahead and grab one of my sleeves. And just like with the front and the back panel, I'm going to lay out my sleeve open and flat just like this along one edge of the bolero. So as you can probably tell, my sleeve is not quite as wide as the front and the back panel. So what we're gonna do is stretch this to fit to the very top 
and the very bottom of the bolero. And adding this little bit of a stretch right here is gonna allow for a little extra room underneath the armpits. That way it's not super tight and pinching us in the wrong places. So following the same method that I used for the shoulder sections, I'm gonna attach a new yarn at the very top edge corner right here. And we're just going to whip stitch the sleeve to the body panel all the way down until I hit the very bottom corner. So this entire sleeve should be attached right here along the bolero. So this is what one sleeve attached to the bolero is looking like. And now I can go ahead, head on over to the other side, follow the exact same steps and attach my other sleeve. All right, so at this point, I have both of my sleeves attached to my body panels. And now that the piece is just lying flat like this, I can go ahead and fold her in half as if we were to wear her. So I'm just folding the front panel over the back panel and likewise when it comes to the sleeves i'm going to fold them in half just like so and following again the exact same process by using the darning needle to kind of whip stitch the two panels shut what i'm going to do is attach a new yarn at either corner it can either start here at the very edge of the cuff or the sleeve or you can start your work right here on the inside of the top but i'm just going to attach my new yarn and just whip stitch again with the darning needle all the way down your sleeves and once that is completed your bolero is fully complete all you have left to do is go in by hand and stitch these in weave them in to hide them throughout your top so now i'm just going to go ahead attach my new yarn and just begin attaching the panels together underneath the underarm sections <laughs> 